Red's entire life, he moved very slow, and he didn't really understand why. Everyone was always going past him, and it never made any sense to him. Now that he had his first badge, he finally got shoes. Ah, oh, dang it. Wanna route. Pokemon! With Brock down, it was time to think of the next gym. The water gym. With its leader, Missy. Red didn't really have a good answer for this gym, and wasn't going to catch anything on the way to make it easy. He could go north of Cerulean to try and find an Oddish, but didn't want to face the horrors of Nugget Bridge before he took on Misty. After stealing some kid's shorts, he goes to Route 4 into another Pokemon Center, where he finds a very stupid salesman. He was just giving away a Magikarp for a cheap 500 Poke Dollars. The salesman explains that the Magikarp was taken from his family at a young age to be part of a circus, but was kicked out because of how boring it was. Red doesn't care because it's going to be the only reason he beats the next gym. Since this encounter was technically an event and not wild, Red was still allowed to catch a Pokemon on Route 4 later on. Water the Magikarp is now in the party. Red heads back down to Route 3 to catch a Sparrow, named Fly 2, just in case something happens to fly. Next up is Mount Moon, where it smells like... Cheese? After catching whatever threw the Zubat, Red made his way through the cave and encountered a strange looking man. After beating him in a battle, and taking money from this grown man, all he said is that he's from Team Rocket, and that his name is Pepperoni. Fire loves Pepperoni so much that he evolved into Charmeleon. As Red progressed through the cave, he saw another one of these Rocket members. This one was named Sausage. He then meets a third Rocket named Mushroom, who explains what Team Rocket is doing here. Their ultimate goal is to make the best tasting pizza for their chain restaurant the Rocket Pizzeria. It's the dream of their president and CEO Giovanni to rule the world by stealing and forcing as many Pokemon as possible to work for his different branches. He dispatched a crew to Mount Moon because he thought the Moonstones buried here were made out of cheese. After taste testing, Mushroom is really glad that Team Rocket has great dental care. Giovanni also wanted as many fossils as they could find, since he's heard many stories about the great cooks of the past. Red was left dumbfounded and moved on. He meets with some nerd playing with fossils and bullies him hard enough to take only one of them since he thought he was too good for both of them. He leaves the cave to end up on Route 4, where he catches whatever for the Snake! and evolves water to become the monster Red always knew he could be. The moment he finally arrived in Cerulean, Red felt strange. He couldn't help but feel someone or something was keeping an eye on him. Well, either way, it was time to take on the second gym. Her name is Miss T because she makes the best tea bags in the world right here in her Cerulean Gym swimming pool. On top of all the really cool tricks Misty makes her Pokemon do to entertain people, the tea has made all of her water Pokemon feel really anxious, full of stress, and tired. Just like her. Unfortunately, water bit the arms off Misty's Staryu and Starmie and turned their arms into ice cream cones. They need to soak up the pool's water to regenerate, officially making them more tea than water. Red gets a second badge. After this victory, it showed Water the circus really was never for him, and was glad to embrace what he's become under Red. Misty asked Red if she could go with him, since it would take forever for the pool to refill. Red denied her and said if she wanted better tea bags, look to him. With chocolate ice cream still dripping down his face, Red headed north where he ran into Blue. Blue couldn't stop talking about how he met Bill, who showed him all kinds of Pokemon to smell. He mentioned Eeveelutions, but for some reason he really couldn't stop talking about how much he loved to smell Vaporeon. Blue was amazed by Water, which was a Pokemon he had never seen before. Red explained how he got him, which made Blue realize how he could turn his nose hairs into fishing line. He got excited and ran off. Up next, Red had to face Nugget Bridge. After the five fiercest battles of his life, he made it to the end, where he got to meet a Team Rocket member. His name was Meatball. Meatball asked Red if he wanted to join Team Rocket, but Red declined because he didn't want to join a team with a bunch of weak trainers. Meatball tried giving Red a nugget to convince him, but Red ended up just taking it and running off. Red, for the first time, fails to catch a Pokemon on a route. The Odyssey would have wanted to fight Misty evaded him. I guess it's a good thing he just went with water instead. Then he caught whatever five the Weedle, and continued his way towards Bill's house. 
When he got there, all he saw was a talking jigglypuff. He told Red to click a button on the computer once he got in the teleporter, but instead he just stole Bill's SS and ticket, looked at the data about all the evolutions, and left. Red heads south and catches Grass the Blueberry. The only reason Grass has a real name is because Red thinks he'll need the coverage for at least a little while, but he really hopes it's not on his final team. Red drops Fly 2 off at the daycare, just in case, then heads into the underground path to Route 6, where he catches whatever six the Meowth. In Vermilion City, Red gets pissed off because a little bush won't let him go to the gym. He heads to the Pokemon fan club where this old man said he'd give Red a bike voucher if he listened to him talk about his precious... Rapidash. The man sounded really... excited? Red immediately heads back to Cerulean to get his new bike. He heads back to Vermilion and heads through Diglett Cave, since he knows the next gym leader uses electric types. He catches Ground the Diglett. Ground is normally showing off its huge muscles, but Red humples him to the point where all he wants to do is stick his head out of the ground. Red heads back and catches whatever seven the Drowsy in Route 11. Some jerk was preventing him from going any further east, so he heads back to Vermilion God on the cruise ship. He was granted passage because of the ticket he stole from that Jigglypuff. He didn't understand why the ship wasn't moving, so he headed up toward the captain's room to see what was going on. Just before he could get there, Blue comes out of his room, talking about how horrible it smelled up there. The battle was easy because they were all grossed out by the smell of that room. They all had really sensitive noses just like Blue. Blue then said that he was headed to the ER because he smelled way too much puke. Red headed into the captain's room, where the captain was throwing up into a trash can. Red snuck up behind him and stole the HM for cut, and then he left, meaning he could finally face the gym leader of Vermilion City. But first, now that he got the cut HM, he could go back through Diglett Cave and go through a path that he wasn't allowed to before. Some nerd was waiting for him, pretending to be his friend, and he gives him the Flash HM. Now he can head back to Vermilion City and cut down the tree that was blocking the path of the gym. After dumpster diving like all good traders do, Red made his way to Surge. All Lieutenant Surge did the entire battle was talk about how great of a war hero he is, even though all he did was cook the meals for the troops. He didn't even do a good job either. All he did was shock some birds and rats and dish them up. One time an electrode exploded close to him in his platoon, making his hair forever yellow and spiky. All of Surge's Pokemon had scars, reminding everyone that they were at war, just like Surge does. Ground did all the dirty work in this gym, making Lieutenant Surge piss. I would say it was an electrifying battle, but it was all conducted by Ground. Ground thought it was hilarious that he couldn't be touched, and started laughing with these little diglet sounds, much to Surge's discomfort. To make him even more scared, Red told Ground to come on out and show his true form after the battle. Even a great chef like Lieutenant Surge was trembling at the sight of Ground, and shakily gave Red his third badge. If he didn't have PTSD before, he certainly does now.